of Isaiah 54. I sing, O barren woman, you who never bore a child, burst into song. Shout for joy, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide, do not hold back, lengthen your cords, strengthen your st st stacks. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will deposit nations and settle in their desolate cities. Do not be afraid, you will not suffer shame. Do not fear disgrace, you will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood, for your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. Father, as we meet around your word, we pray that once again you may speak to us and speak with us for your glory. Amen. A, a few weeks ago, we started uh, a, a new series on Sunday mornings entitled Stepping into a New Season. And for some of you here uh, in the room, it is a new season academically. People have moved from school to college, from college uh, to university. Others have moved into new places of employment. Uh, some of our guys have moved to other cities within the UK, and it's very much uh, a, a new season. For others of us, it has been a, a new season in the various stages of life. Some people have gone from their 20s into their 30s. I remember that happening in my life and felt quite apprehensive uh, about becoming 30. I have to be honest, I'm very apprehensive now about moving into my 40s. Uh, it really fills me with a... I don't know why you're laughing. Uh, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to being in my 40s. I really am. Uh, wherever we're at in, in life, for all of us, uh, meteorologically, and uh, I have to confess, we've been practicing that word all week. We were in the office, and, and I didn't know what the word was, and I got hold of Phil. I said, Phil, I need a word for this, and the word is meteorologically, but we could not say it. But thanks be to God, we said it today, meteorologically. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Meteorologically, on the 23rd of September, we moved from summer into autumn. It is a new season. The nights are getting darker. The temperature is changing. This week, we put the quilt back on our bed. It's amazing. And, and uh, yeah, anyway, uh, that's enough about that. Um, it's a new season, and uh, a new season brings new things. It brings new opportunities. It brings new challenges. For some people, this new season has brought you to new places. Welcome to Swansea, new students, and those who are arriving in our city has brought you to new places. It's brought you to new people, bringing some of you into a new church. You don't have to be crazy to come to this church, but it does help. Feel at home. Feel at home. The Bible speaks about God's peculiar people, and there are quite a few of them in this room today. Feel at home. Uh, this is family. It, it also not only brings us to new places and new people, but to new possibilities. And we thank God for new seasons. A new season can be exciting, and it can fill us with a real sense of expectancy. A new season can also be scary. And it can fill us with a sense of apprehension. And maybe in the room today there is some excitement but also some uh, sense of apprehension. There is an expectancy but there's also a little bit of, of feeling a little bit scared about the unknown. 
Uh, I don't know where you're at, but I, I want you to know for me, I feel excited at the moment about this particular season that we have stepped into and are further stepping into in the, in the weeks and months that are before us. Alison said about October being a busy month, and as we look at what's before us, it is a busy season. But we don't just want it to be busy, we believe it's going to be productive and fruitful and positive and good. Uh, and I encourage you in this season. I'm excited about what we're already seeing. I'm excited about what we're going to see. And I really do believe God has got some good things in store for us in this particular season. I'm really convinced that greater things are yet to come and greater things are still to be done in the city, in the house, in your heart, in your life, in my life. And so very much in light of that, I I want to speak uh, into this new season, and I want to talk today about making room. Making room. Just a few moments ago, we sang that wonderful song, I Will Make Room For You. And uh, it was just over a month ago that we sang that song for the very first time. Uh, And I was sat here singing that song, and as we sang it, I I was really touched, I was really stirred, I was really moved, and I was also very challenged because I'm singing, I will make room for you. And I felt challenged in my life uh, about making room for him. I felt challenged for us as a church that we needed to make room for him. And I I really knew in that moment that I needed to say something uh, about this. I needed to speak into it. And so this morning, that is what we want to do. And so as we step further into this new season, I want us to think about making room for God, making room for God in our lives, making room for God in our hearts, in our homes, and for us together in this house, making room for Him to do whatever it is that he is wanting to do. And friend, be in no doubt about it, there is something that God is wanting to do. Something he is wanting to do in your life. Something he's wanting to do in this house. He's wanting to do something. Uh, Last Sunday morning at our 11 o'clock service, Jill, who uh, spoke to us just a few moments ago, came to me and uh, said, Michael, I really feel reminded of the words from Isaiah 43, verse 19, where it says this, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past, see, I am doing a new thing. And the emphasis that Jill brought wasn't so much on forgetting, but it was on the fact of, I am doing a new thing. God says, I'm doing something new. And as she said it, I I didn't share it last Sunday, but it just confirmed a real sense of what I knew in my heart, that in hearts and lives and in the heart and life of this house, God is doing something new. He is doing a new thing. On Thursday evening, uh, the elders met, and Gareth, who is one of our elders, Uh, was praying and in his prayer told us of how that very morning he had been out running. And uh, as he was running, he said he physically sensed a change in the season. And he said these words, it felt fresh and it felt new and and, and many ways reflected something of, of what was happening in the life of the church. A new season where God is doing a new thing. And friends, let me tell you, God is always at work. God is always doing something. God is always doing new things. Even this morning, there were new mercies that came and touched our lives. The Bible speaks about that fact Some new and we thank him for those new mercies that surround us but one of the key things that God is doing in the lives of his people is completing the work that he has begun in us if you are a Christian if you have been born again if you have given your life to Jesus and chosen to follow him then God has begun a work in your life it's a good work 
And Philippians 1, 6 tells us that the one who has begun a good work in us will complete it. God is doing something in us. It's the work of salvation. And the work of salvation is about us becoming more and more like Jesus. God's plan for you and me is that we become more like Jesus. Jesus. And as that salvation is outworked in our lives, we are becoming more and more like Him. And our ongoing journey with Him is filled with new things, new discoveries, new experiences, new ways that He will lead us and guide us, new things that He will show us, new things that He will do for us. And of course, those mercies that are new every morning. In John's Gospel, chapter 3, John the Baptist said some incredible words. He said these words, He must increase, and I must decrease. He was talking about Jesus. And you may know that John the Baptist was the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. He came to prepare the way. And John had a significant number of followers, and John was popular. But John said, He must increase. This is a verse about the prominence of Jesus. Jesus will become more prominent. I will become less. But friends, not only is it a, 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 a word about the prominence of, of Jesus, but I think it's also a little picture of, of our lives and of God's plan for our lives. That in our lives, He would increase and I would decrease. There will be more of Him and less of me. More of him and less of me. And I guess for many of us, that would be something of our desire. Lord, may there be more of you and less of me. We die to our old self and we embrace the new person that has been made alive in Jesus. The new us, the new self. More of him, more of what he wants for us, more of what he wants to do in us, do with us, do through us. Anybody say an amen to, to, to that? We'll have a little. And thank you for saying amen, and it's great to say amen to that. But in that, there is a challenge. It's okay to say yes, Lord, more, but saying more brings with it a very real challenge. And the challenge we face, friends, is to make room for him. That's the challenge that we face. Let's be honest, many of our lives are full. Many of our lives are full. Many of us are, are, are busy, full schedules. Our lives are are full. Week by week, we go from one thing to another, from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. In, in our own lives this week, it's been a bit like that. We just seem to have gone from one thing to another. It's been good. We've enjoyed it. I'm not complaining. I'm not grumbling. I'm not, but it's just been one of those weeks. And sometimes we have one of those weeks. Sometimes life is just like one of those weeks nonstop, isn't it? And, and we just go from one thing to another another. We've had something on. I've had to be somewhere. I've had to do something. And, and I know that would be true for many of you as well. We constantly seem to have places to go, people to see, and things to do. Those of you who are coming into university, it's been freshers week, but now you're going to get down to the real work. There will be lectures. There will be essays. Some of you lecturers in the room know what's ahead of these guys who are, are coming. It's a baptism of fire, and we'll be praying for you that God will help you. Our plates are full. And when I'm talking about our plates being full, I'm not talking about the free food that's on offer upstairs after the service. Your plates will be full, and I like a full plate of food. If I ever come to your house, please don't serve me this um, fancy food where they give you a, one little mouthful. I want a full plate. But when I'm talking about full plate, I'm talking about our lives. Our lives are filled with so many things and our plates are full. And, 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 and yeah, you may be saying, Michael, my plate is full. But friends, let me ask this. Let me ask a question. Our plates may be full, but is everything on our plate necessary? Is everything on our plate necessary? You know, Christmas dinner in our house, we must have 27,000 vegetables on offer. 
and you've got to fit every vegetable on your plate. Friends, is everything necessary? And as we step into this new season, as we think about the new things God is wanting to do, that's something we need to think about. In all these things, in all our doings, in all our comings, in all our goings, is there any room for him? Is there any room for what he is wanting to do? You know, making room for God in a world that is characterized by hurry and hyperactivism is a real challenge. And I really feel this morning we have a little opportunity here little opportunity as we step further into this new season for us to evaluate where we're at, for us to declutter and create some space and make room for whatever he wants to do. You know, at home, sometimes you have the opportunity to go into a room, to go into the attic, to go into the shed, and just to have a little declutter. Doesn't it feel good? Doesn't it make a difference? It's a good thing to do. And just as it's a good thing to do maybe physically, it's also a good thing to do spiritually. To look at our lives. Full of stuff. Is there any space? Is there any room? Is this a time for a little bit of declutter, for creating some space, for making some room for God and for whatever he might want to do in our lives. You know, as a church, we have a real sense that there is something that God is wanting to do in our city, that he wants to do something as well through us, and, and that is not exclusive to us. I thank God for the, the church in our city. And the church in our city is much bigger than City Church. We have a part to play, as do the other church families in our city. We're only a small part of the bigger kingdom picture. But we really feel God wants to do something through us. And friends, in order for that to be a reality, I really feel we've got to make some room for him as, as a body together. So this message comes to us individually for our own hearts and lives, but it also comes to us as a church family for our church family. A few moments ago, uh, Grace read to us from Isaiah chapter 54. It's a great passage of Scripture, and we see there that God wanted to do something in the barren woman's life. He wanted to turn things around for her. And thank God, our God is, is a God who turns things around. And in this room, there are many testimonies, many stories of how God has turned things around. Some of you in the room today are needing God to turn some stuff around for you. And we pray with you in Jesus' name that he'll do it. Amen. Do it, Lord, for your glory. God wanted to do in the barren woman's life something that she hadn't seen before. It was a new thing. God wanted to do something new for her. And the message was clear. In order for him to do the new thing, in order for him to do what she needed him to do, in order for him to do what she wanted him to do, in order for him to do what he had planned to do, what he wanted to do, she needed to make room. And friends, I would suggest that for God to do for us, what we need him to do, for God to do for us what we want him to do, for God to do with us and in us and through us what he is wanting to do in us, with us and through us, we also have to make some room. We have to make some room. We've got to make some space. We've got to make some time. I think we all know that we cannot make God move. It, it, we, we can't make him move, but there is something we can do. We can create some space for him to move. Can't make him move, but we can create some space for him to move. And that's what I want to encourage in us today, that we would make some space for God to move, that we create some space and we invite him to come and move in that space. We invite him to, to do something. 
thing. We make some space. We make some room for the move of God. We make some space for what He wants to give us. You know, God is wanting to give to us so many good things, so many blessings. God is wanting to give to us. Let's make some room. Some of us are so full that we've got no room for what He wants to give us now. We need to make some space. These great verses in Isaiah 54 announce that God was going to do something. And as you read the story, there's a a wonderful, wonderful uh, imagery here of of death being replaced with life, of of barrenness being replaced with fruitfulness, of, of despair being replaced with hope and shame being replaced with joy. It's a beautiful picture. And you know, those are things that God delights to do. He delights to bring life in place of death. He, he delights to, to bring fruitfulness in place of barrenness, hope in place of despair, and joy in place of shame. And can I say today, I, I really do believe in hearts and lives here and online. God's going to do some of this in some of your lives. You're going to see it happen in Jesus' name. So God says in these lovely verses, I'm going to do something. I want to do something in your life. I want to do something new, something that you haven't seen before. I want to do something new. But look at verse 2. God said, you need to make room for what I'm going to do. You need to make some room. Enlarge the place of your tent. Read it with me. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. In the EHV, the English Heritage Version, it actually says these words, make room for more. Make room for more. Up until this point, the barren woman had enough space But because of what God was going to do in her, with her, through her, for her, the barren woman had to enlarge her living space. She had to increase her capacity. And I have a real sense, friends, uh, that God is speaking to us at this time individually and collectively, that we too need to increase our capacity. God wants to enlarge our capacity. Often in church life, when we talk about enlarging capacity, we think about our seating capacity. We need more space. We need more room. But this is not about seating capacity, what I'm talking about today. It's not about extensions to the building. What I'm talking about today, friends, is increasing our capacity to receive what He is bringing into our lives and into the life of this house. I'm sure that in all of our lives, we want to see growth and increase. As followers of Jesus, we desire to grow. We desire to see increase. And and sometimes, friends, you know, when we don't see that expected growth and development and increase, we can feel a little bit frustrated. Anybody been there? Anybody know what I'm talking about? We can feel a little bit uh, frustrated. Friends, I wonder if our lack of growth or progress is not down to the preacher, is not down to the preaching, not down to the lack of prayer meetings or the lack of or, or stuff like that. It comes down to a capacity issue. It comes down to a capacity issue. If you plant an oak tree in a small container, that little seed will grow, it will germinate, it will grow. However, the size of that tree is limited by the container it is planted in. It's about capacity. And in order for that tree to really thrive and flourish and grow, it needs increased capacity. And for some of us friends to grow, to thrive, to flourish, we need some increased capacity. We need to create some space. We need to make some room. And in some of our lives, folks, 
The message is simply, you need to make some room. You want to grow. You want to thrive. You want to flourish. You want more of God. Make some room. Make some room. Increased capacity. In uh, Isaiah 54, making room meant that there was a stretching of the tent curtains. There was a lengthening of the cords. There was a strengthening of the stakes. What's all that about? It's about taking action. It's about doing something. God said, I am going to do something. I want to do something for you. I want to do something in you. I want to do something through you. Something you haven't seen before. I want to do something new for you. But you're not just going to sit back and let me do it. You know, sometimes God announces something to us and we think, okay, Lord, I'm just going to sit here and let you do it all. Over to you. Woohoo! But that's not how it works. In this particular situation, there was a partnering with God. And in our lives and in this house, there is a real call to partnering with him in order for her to see the new thing, in order for her to receive what God was wanting to do, she needed to make room. She needed to make room. She needed to take some action. I have a real sense that in our lives today, maybe some of us need to take some real action. We've been saying, okay, Lord, it's over to you. And God is saying, well, I'm waiting for you. You make some space. You make some room, and I will come. I'll fill it. I'll do what it is that you are needing me to do. I'll do what it is that I am wanting to do. I'm almost through, but there's one more story that I want to reference. It's from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. The words are on the screen, and perhaps you'd like to read them with me. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and in each is filled. Put it to one side. Verse 5, she left him and afterwards shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Once again, God was going to do something new in the life of this woman and her family. But before he did what he was going to do, there was something they had to do. God said, I am going to Bring a miracle into your life. And oil, that little bit of oil, I am going to cause a miracle of multiplication. And that little bit of oil is going to flow. And it's not going to stop flowing until every jar is filled. They had to go and get the jars. The empty jars. They had to create and make room for the miracle. They had to create the space. Go and get those empty jars. And the wonderful thing about this story here, friends, is that they closed the door and they began to pour. And when every jar was filled, the oil stopped. Every space Every vessel where there was room 
was filled with oil. And I believe, friends, there is a jar of oil over this house. And if there's room, if there's space, every vessel where there's a bit of space, where there's a bit of room, he'll pour in that oil. That oil is a symbol, as you know, of the Holy Spirit. He'll pour it in. But friends, some of us are so full. Our lives are full, full of stuff that there's no room. Will we make some room? Can we make some space? Do you want some of that oil? In both these stories, we see people doing what they hadn't done before. And friends, you will notice that it was when they did what they hadn't done before that they saw what they hadn't seen before. When they did what they hadn't done before, they saw what they hadn't seen before. And in our lives, I wonder, if we would dare to do what we haven't done before, that we might see what we haven't seen before. When we intentionally come to a place of surrender and make some room for God, when we create some space, God will use that space. And the Holy Spirit is able to move. Finally, friends, I'm nearly through. Thank you. In a few months' time, we'll be celebrating Christmas. Some of you have already started shopping, preparing. We read in Luke 2, 7, that Mary gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths, placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. There was no room for them in the family homes. There was no space for them. There was no room for them. And do you know what? 2,000 years on, people still have no room for Jesus. And friends, let me just say, I'm not just talking about those who are not yet Christians. Sometimes we as followers of Jesus have got no room. Our lives are so full of stuff. And the reality is there's no room for Jesus. There's no room for him to do something new in our lives. There's no room for him to do what he is wanting to do. What are we going to do? We need to make some room for Jesus. We need to make some space for him. And so can I encourage us today Make some room for Jesus in your life, in your heart, in your home, in this house. Make some room for Jesus. In your day-to-day -day life, friends, make some room to be with him. For some, it could be an hour. For some, it could be five minutes. The length of time is not the important thing. The fact is that we are with him. We quiet ourselves. We spend some time in his presence. We're just with him. It can be when we're driving the car, but if you are driving the car, don't shut your eyes and bow your head. Please keep your eyes open. And don't go faster than 20. <laughs> Take time to talk with him. Some people call it prayer, but prayer is just talking with him. Talk with him as you go through your day. Take time to hear from him. Our God is a God who speaks. Primarily, he speaks through the scriptures. But by the Holy Spirit, we can hear that still, small voice inside. Open the book. You don't have to necessarily read 10 chapters a day. Maybe it's 10 verses. Maybe it's one verse. But let the Lord speak to you. Make room for him. Make room for him. Make room to be with his people. We all live busy lives, but make room for God. Make room for being with his people. Make room to serve his plans and his purposes. Find the part that you're supposed to play. Make room for God to do whatever it is that he's wanting to do. And be in no doubt about it, God is wanting to do something in you, for you, with you, through you. Make room for him to be who he is. Make room for him to do what he does. I'd like to invite the band to come. 
The song that we sang earlier speaks about a fresh surrender. And often, friends, in life, and particularly for us today as we uh, are stepping further into a new season, as we're thinking about making room for God, we might need in our own lives to come to a place of fresh surrender. Here I am, Lord. I want you to do in me whatever you were wanting to do in me. I'm wanting you to do for me whatever it is you want to do for me. I'm wanting you to do through me whatever it is you're wanting to do through me. And I come to a place of surrender. All those worries, all those burdens, all the stuff, I just lay it down. And I will make room for you. Shall we pray? Father, I thank you for your word and I thank you for your heart for us. And I thank you that you are a God who is doing new things. You're always doing something. And I thank you that in each of our hearts and lives, you are right now at work doing something, something new. There are things you want to do for us that we haven't seen or known or experienced before. There are ways you want to take us that we haven't been before and we want to go those ways. And so we're aware, Lord, that we need to make some room for you. And I pray that day by day, we would make some room for you. Lord, as we look at our full plates, help us to see what is not necessary. And just to make a little bit of room. Father, I pray in our lives there might be an enlarged capacity that we could see the growth and the development and the increase and the flourishing that we desire to see I pray oh God that as we together make room for you that we might see the move of God that we're believing for that we might see those miracles those signs those wonders that our city might be impacted in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to sing just the line of that song a couple of times. Belinda's going to lead us. And as she does, if you are saying to the Lord, Lord, I want to make some room for you, then as we sing, I'm going to invite you to make a response. I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet. I'm going to invite you to open your arms before the Lord. And I invite you to sing it from your heart. Lord, I will make room for you. And then after a little while, I'm going to invite everyone to stand. So. Initially, just those who are making a response to the Lord. I will make room for you. <laughs>